Hi again! So I decided that after I was done with the February prompts, I wanted to take one of my February creatures and make the postcard for my Patreon. So I had taken the whole page, I picked out a handful that I really liked, and I posted them to my Patreon and let my patrons vote on which one they'd prefer. They all ended up voting for the uh, Onfield, Enfield? which is the little fox creature. Um, and then I also had posted um, some options too for the stickers and they actually ended up picking um, the Strix and the Skvalder, I think is what it's called. The little rabbit there on the screen, actually just underneath the fox. It's got rabbit and partridge or pheasant combined. In any case, the on-field though is what I'm working on in today's video. And this one was uh, a very cute creature. Um, but I don't think it was intended to be when it was first created. So the Onfield is a, uh, I kept calling them, same as the game lion, a, um, a coat of arms creature or something like that. It's, it's basically like a heraldry monster. So they use them in um, coats of arms, different ways to represent like royal family lineages, etc. So if you've ever seen like the, uh, Oh, like there'll be the, the shield and then there'll be like two creatures next on either side of a, a tower or um, surrounding a crown or whatever, the, a bunch of heraldry symbolism. The on-field was used a lot in that. So I think its initial design wasn't supposed to be as cute as I made it. I think it's supposed to be, um, you know, elegant and strong and blah, uh, but I'm, I'm me, so it came out cute. Um, but yeah, so the on-field was, it has the head of a fox, four legs of an eagle, the chest of a greyhound, the body of a lion, and the hindquarters and tail of a wolf. And then sometimes it's got wings. I didn't do wings on mine. Um, I sort of forewent the lion body because I couldn't figure out what they meant by a lion body, but also a greyhound chest. Yeah, so uh, basically... <laughs> I drew a funky fox in the end, but I tried to stick with putting those like front uh, paws ending in the talons instead of trying to do like actual bird legs part way down. I think if I'd actually done bird legs from um, where their elbow would be downward, so that f um, the foreleg and the paws as talons as well, it probably would have made it to look a little bit less like just a funky fox and a little bit more like a magical creature, but. Yeah, well, hindsight. And also, I still really love the design, so that's fine. Uh, I kind of just ignored the whole lion part because I, again, I couldn't figure out what they wanted exactly with the lion part. So I just sort of went with furry. And I stuck more so with the, the greyhound for the actual, like, chest and waist. Because greyhounds have such a defined waist, I should know, I have one. And that great big barrel chest, I thought that was something that would actually you know, differentiate it from a regular fox, because foxes and a lot of other canids that aren't built like, um, built like greyhounds, or like those type of like, long, sleek sighthounds, you can, you look at them and they're, they're sort of, the belly kind of goes flat across, or that the, the pinch at the, the waist up into the belly isn't as pronounced, so I thought that might make it look a little more different, and also any excuse to include greyhounds in is great because I love to draw my greyhound. <laughs> um, and then for the feet and tail of a wolf, I just tried to kind of make it look a little more fluffy. Again, I feel like somebody tried to draw a lion and then whoever had commissioned them was like, oh, you've created a new magical beast for me. I can tell by its face that's like a fox and it's got this these tail like a bear and, a th and they were like, yes. That was what I meant to do. <clears throat> it's it's a combo creature. Uh, because, honestly, if you take out the bird talons, it's basically just a scrawny fox. Actually, I feel like it might even... I guess the, the fox I'm thinking of are way too tall to be what they may have been describing to each other, but those... Uh, maned foxes, I think that's what it is, or maned wolves, where they're like a, a fox on stilts. <laughs> Maybe that's what they were looking at, and they thought, ah, yes, that's a that's a magical creature. Um, in any case, I I did have fun drawing it. I did have fun making it cute, doing like the little leap. It took me a while to figure out a pose for the card. I ended up settling just for this pose because all the other ones I did. Um, you didn't see, but I kept drawing it on the paper and then erasing, trying out the different poses, like, larger instead of just in sketch form. 
and the thumbnails were cute, but I couldn't translate it well to the paper, so I thought I wanted to fill the paper as much as possible. I'm just going to do this nice little, like, leapy jump. I had a bunch of pictures of foxes jumping on my computer screen next to me, trying to figure out, like, exactly how I wanted the pose to go. I thought about doing two of them together, and it was just... The sketching went great, and the February prompt went great, but for some reason that day I was just having trouble finalizing that design on the paper, so I decided to kind of simplify the pose and just have fun with it, and it would it should come together, and it did. I think the only thing that I regret about it is I kind of shortened that front leg, um, the leg closest to the viewer. I shortened it too much when I tried to like have it curled up. I didn't uh, exaggerate that shape enough, and it's definitely a little too short. But again, that's something that I will notice forever and ever and ever, and probably a ton of people, even if they do notice it, won't even care. So. Eh, well, you do. Um, so then I thought, instead of trying to make it look less fox-like um, with the body features, uh, which I'd already, you know, concreted down, I thought it'd be fun to kind of play with the the patternings on it because they never described the actual coloration of it. They just described the parts, and I thought, well, I mean, on a coat of arms, it's just, you know, usually a gray because it'll be carved out of metal, or it's a green or a yellow or something simple so I thought I'll have some fun with this and I kind of tried to make it look a little bit foxy but make the markings not quite match a fox I thought it'd be fun if like if this were a real magical creature and you saw it in the woods you'd be like ah yes a fox and as you got closer you'd be like what what is that and you can see in the little February prompt I made it the face a lot more fox like that um, the white mask um, and then the the lot more orangey tones and then this one I tried to put in a little bit more brown I tried to get rid of all the white markings and just make it like light tan colors so again it would look fox like at a distance and then as you got closer you'd be like that's not what I thought it was what is this and it resulted in a lot of fun like layering up of colors pretty much for this whole painting I used my beam paints uh, I don't think I mixed any other... Oh, I think I might have mixed some black from my Koi set in, just because I didn't have a black in any of my beam set. So, But the rest of it is uh, either that primary set you see there, the cookie, um, the pumpkin color mixed in with some of them, and then I also had a, uh, a set that I had bought previously that had like a, a really beautiful like burnt umber and a, uh, like a Mayan red, I think, mixed in with those ones. And I was using those to kind of make that those um, that primary mixed orange or the pumpkin orange really a little more earthy colored it it worked um, it worked really well to actually like kind of tie that back into a more natural coloration uh, and then I thought okay I'll make those talons really dark so they look kind of like a, a bird's black talons uh, I think what it ended up doing was disguising the details a little bit so again it sort of just looks like he's got his little feety stuck out <laughs> but I'm I mean, it's cute, so what do you do? So I have the sticker designs also um, created, and you've probably seen them either on my Instagram at the end card of this video and my previous February video. Um, they are both the Strix and the Squalder? <laughs> I should look up what I did. Um, but both of them are going to be the two little stickers that come with this print. Um, I'll be hand embellishing it once I get it. So they'll not just be a print, but they'll be a print with like signatures or um, maybe metallic paints added to it or extra ink added to it. Um, I'm going to, I basically get an extra one printed and play around with that to see what I like. But I, it's, it's fun designing these and I hope I continue to have fun doing it so that I keep wanting to make them for Patreon. It, it's kind of fun to see your own stuff as merchandise. <laughs> uh, I also used, here you can see I'm using the ghoulish set from Jasmine Fay, uh, and I'm using the O positive, uh, just like as heavily as I could to make a metallic red little um, triangle behind him. And that's my on field, and yeah, I really hope you enjoyed my video. I'd also like to thank my patrons Charlotte Mitchell, So Spice, Audrey McAvoy, Olivia White, Sarah Flanagan, Philippa Riggs, Tasha Red Fox, Friday Norvell, 
Rory, Jesse Skrill, and Andrew Wilson. You guys make it so that I can do this stuff. Thanks so much. Bye. Thank you.